Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're actually going to be looking at Alethium and mainly today we're going to be looking at the Alethium block rewards slash emission schedule plus the token supply of Alethium because there's a lot of stuff within Alethium that it's hard to understand so I thought I'd distill it down for you so you can get an idea of how the block rewards work on Alethium and how the supply works for Alethium. So if we scroll down here on the Alethium website we can see that Alethium employs a proof of less work which combines physical work and coin economics to dynamically adjust the work required to mine new blocks. Given the same network conditions, Alethium uses 90% less energy compared to Bitcoin. However, right now Alethium is not actually utilizing this proof of less work. So the way that it works is there's a bracket for hash rates and we'll go into this in a little bit. But as soon as you hit these certain brackets for hash rates, proof of less work will be triggered. So that's the main thing that you have to know. It's not using proof of less work now, it's just using a proof of work model. However, it will be triggered in the future. This is mainly because probably the hash rate is going to increase with ASIC miners or FPGAs, but we'll get into it more as the video goes on. So the token supply and allocation. So at mainnet launch, an initial supply of 140 million tokens was minted with the Genesis block. These are vesting over years, so they get released every quarter, and we'll show a little bit about that in a minute. However, the remaining supply of Alethium tokens will be mined over the next 82 years. So this is 860 million Alethium that can be mined. 140 million is not mined. It was mined in the first block and put into separate wallets. The theoretical hard cap is 1 billion Alethium that can be in the market, I guess, but it will never be reached due to deflationary forces like transaction fees burning. So they do have a burning mechanism embedded in Alethium as well. So that's going to decrease the supply. So as we can see here, 80 million is for past and upcoming sales. 30 million is for community and ecosystem development. And 30 million is allocated to support the development of Alethium. And this is what I mean how they're unlocked every quarter. So when Alethium started, it unlocked that amount. And then it, and as it goes on, it unlocks a certain amount of coins. So right now, I believe... We're in this range right here. So where I'm pointing my mouse, because this is 2023, this is the quarter for 2023. So as we're going into 2024, this part will be unlocked. So when we scroll down, it just shows us how it's gonna be unlocked in terms of tokens sold and the unlocking dates for them. I would think that this would cause Alethium to kind of go down in price because people might be selling it because they had their pre-allocation for it. However, we haven't really seen that with the price. So when we scroll down, there's also a question about the total circulating supply and the maximum supply. So on coin market cap, if you've checked it out, you would see here that the total supply is 184 million with the only circulating supply of 42 million. So this is because of that pre-allocation that we saw just then. Only 40 million has been mined because if you minus 40 million from 180 million, it gives you 140 million coins overall however only 42 million have been mined directly through miners so we're still very early in the circulating supply phase 4.24 percent and that is going to go up to 860 million so this is what when the whole circulating supply is mined it'll be 860 million alethium on the network so now we need to look at the emission schedule for alethium so that was the token supply i just wanted to clear that up that's not really the technical stuff. This proof of less work is more of a technical side and I'm trying to distill it down for you so you can understand exactly how the Alethium network works in terms of mining. So proof of less work will activate when the total hash rate of Alethium reaches at least one exahash per second. For the sake of comparison, as of today, it says 22 terahash per second, which is 0.0022% of the required hash rate for activation. So what this means is when Alethium hits a certain hash rate, proof of less work will actually be activated onto the network and that's when it becomes way more efficient to be mining. However, if you have a lot of hardware on the network, there would obviously be a difference between efficiency and the total amount of hash rate divided into the machines that are on the network. So it would kind of work out as in you would be mining more but you would also be mining less. It's kind of like a counterbalance to mining with ASICs in the future. So Alethium's reward for newly generated blocks is also called mining rewards. We can skip past this. 
the mining reward is bound by two curves based on hash rate and a timestamp. So the timestamp and the hash rate are two different graphs and they basically work in unison together to give you a figure for the block reward. At any given time for a given hash rate, the reward per block equals the minimum between the time based reward and the hash rate based reward. So these are the two rewards that you can receive on the Alephium network, as in it's a calculation that is always ongoing. It's based on time. It's going to be an inflation curve, which is time based. And there's also going to be a hash rate based reward. So those two figures, they do a calculation in the code and it gives you the block reward for that time and the hash rate on the network. So look in here, this is the inflation curve. So as you can see, the emission rate for the first four years evolves as follows. Obviously this will go down as a graph, but, but it's gonna be going down. So you basically have less of a block reward. However, this is also working in unison with the hash rate inflation curve. So the hash rate inflation curve is talking about these brackets for Alephium. When the hash rate is between zero hash and one peta hash, the minor reward increases gradually from zero Alephium to 60, which is shared between 16 chains per block period. So you gotta do 60, this would be at the top, divided by 16, which is 3.75, which would mean that at the top of this range, as we're approaching one peta hash, the block reward will be 3.75, depending on also this inflation curve for the time. So these two things are working together. Right now, the block reward is around 2.6. So you can kind of see how far away we are off this one peta hash range. And we'll have a look at the hash rate in a minute. However, it says here a block period with a minimum of 30 Alephium guaranteed. That would be 30 Alephium shared between the 16 chains. Remember that. As it says 60 for the block reward here, this is actually divided between the 16 chains. And this is why you have a four second block time for Alephium because you take 64 seconds and divide it by 16, gives you four seconds for the block times on Alephium. So when it says 30 Alephium guaranteed, this means that there will be 30 Alephium guaranteed shared between the 16 chains, which works out to about 1.25 Alephium. So that's the minimum guaranteed through this range. So this is zero hash to one peta hash, and we're still in this range here. If we look at the all time hash rate, this chart is a bit skewed and there are some questions which I would like to ask some of the devs in terms of the activation of these brackets. So once you pass one peta hash, does that stay as the figure even if it drops below the one peta hash range? That's what I'd like to know because it did hit one peta hash or above on this hash rate unless this is a figure that's not reported properly. It says five peta hash there. So maybe it's not actually activated because this is probably some data error unless there was a large amount of hash rate on the network. However, if we just take this part off, we can see the hash rate overall. It's increasing, but we're nowhere near the one peta hash range. We still need around 930 more tera hash on the network before we enter into this one peta hash range. When it comes to that one peta hash range, I think we're still in it unless it got triggered back when that hash rate spike happened but we'll have to contact some of the devs if they see this video, then they can answer that question for you. However, once we pass that range, it's gonna go from one peta hash to one equa hash range, where the reward actually decreases from 60 Alephium to 20 per block period. So remember, all these figures are gonna be divided by 16 because there's 16 chains, and this is what they're talking about per block period. So 20 Alephium per block period divided by 16 changes 1.25, I think I got the figure wrong for 30. It would probably be like 1.75. However, the lowest block reward at the end of the Equihash range would be 1.25. So right now we're in this phase where it's increasing the block reward. But remember, it also does decrease slightly because of this inflation curve. It's the calculation between the inflation curve and this inflation curve for hash rate. So there are some calculations which, you know, we're not going to get into the technical side. I just want to explain it kind of at the basic terms for you guys. However, in this range, proof of less work will still not be activated. And it is activated when you hit one Equihash. As it said back here, it says proof of less work will be activated when the total hash rate of Alephium reaches 
at least one echo hash per second. So this is where the reward gradually decreases from 20 Alephium to zero, and this would probably be shared between the 16 chains as well. The inflation rates are estimations as block time is very dynamic on a real network. So it's constantly doing this calculation between the inflation time-based curve and the inflation for the hash rate based curve. Now you can click on these GitHub CSV files to see the actual curve of it because it's not gonna exactly look like that. The same goes for the inflation time-based curve. And then when the hash rate surpasses one equa hash, proof of less work will be triggered. So as I said earlier on in the video, I think this is because as ASICs come onto the network, you're gonna be competing way more, but they wanna reduce the electricity used on the network so it'll become way more efficient to mine however there'll be a large range of asics hopefully down the line that are mining alethium and then lastly it talks about burning their transaction fees so there'll never be you know 860 million actual alethium floating around on the network because by the time it hits that a lot of alethium would have been burned through the transaction fees and it says here, it's a way for network participants to incentivize miners to process their transactions faster. In the Alephian blockchain, all transaction fees are burnt to keep the mining incentives equally distributed between all chains. So it goes back to these 16 chains here. One of them could be quicker, but it's going to make up for it in transaction fees. So you incentivize miners to process the transactions quicker. So right here, we actually have a chart of how this works in terms of the hash rate to the reward. So as you can see, the reward is the dark blue line and the network hash rate is the light blue line. Now I've cut out this big part because it basically shows a straight line here and we can't really look at the figures. So I'm gonna cut that part out and that's for the big peta hash spike that we saw. And obviously if some of the devs see this video, please could you just reach out on Twitter or something like that or leave a comment just telling us about that spike if it actually happened and if it did trigger that second bracket for the mining rewards. However, as you can see here, as the network drops, the rewards are gonna go up. That's just based on difficulty as well. But there are some times where the network hash rate is still climbing and the rewards are going down. So like here, the actual network hash rate is taking a dip off, but the rewards are getting better. And then here, the network hash rate is actually going up and the rewards are getting less. So it's all doing this calculation on the network between the time inflation plus the brackets of hash rate based inflation and those two together plus, you know, difficulty on the network will give you the block reward. So we're currently sitting at 2.6 as the block reward and that does change on a basically daily basis. So we could see it actually in our miner right here. So this is a recorded block reward here from the recent block rewards that I got on a solo miner and it's actually recording as 2.61. So it is increasing over time as we said that this bracket would, but there's also the minus inflation curve that is taking place as well. So they're kind of countering to each other. One of them's increasing and one of them's decreasing. However, it will over time before we hit this one pesa hash range, depending on if we are actually in this right now, that's still up for debate because of that pesa hash spike. But if we're in this range, then the reward will be decreasing from 60 Alephium down to 20 per block period. So overall, Alephium is basically using two methodologies to calculate the block reward, and this is gonna give us a figure. So I think the maximum ever block reward, depending on the calculations, will be 3.75 times by 16, which would give us 60 Alephium. So that would be the maximum block reward that you could ever hit. However, that's not gonna be the truth because of the minus of inflation on the time-based block reward. However, when it comes to solo Alephium mining, we've been doing this for a while. If you wanna check out some of the shorts on the channel, we go over basically a daily update on the solo miner for Alephium. We're getting around 1.2 giga hash, added another card yesterday just because I saw that it was very efficient on hash rate NO. And so far we've hit, I believe seven blocks on the whole Alephium network. If we divide that, it would be seven-ish blocks or maybe six. So that's how much blocks we've hit overall. And we've been mining, I think for the last month, I believe. So we've hit seven blocks in a month, which is pretty good luck on the network. 
We hit one at 19%, one at 4.7, one at 50, one at 81, which is you're seeing here. And the one before this was actually hit at 150. However, it's still considered lucky because the network actually had a spike in hash rate. So the difficulty is going to go up, which means that you're still considered lucky on the network if you have it over 100%. So if you want to check out the shorts on the channel, you can check out my Alethium Solo Miner updates every day. And that's basically the video on Alethium emission schedule and token supply, just clearing everything up. As I said, if one of the devs do see this, please reach out and tell us about that hash rate that we saw on the network there. And if it actually triggered it and kept it in the one petahash to one equahash range for the emission schedule. Please like the video and subscribe for more Alephium content and crypto mining content.